Throughout history, people have resolved their conflicts primarily with weapons. Mankind waged wars for economic, political, religious, racial, and other reasons. Many scientists suggest that the meeting of our distant ancestors with the Neanderthals could not have ended in anything but a war of extermination. Today, we will try to understand the causes and consequences of this first global war in the history of our planet. If you're interested in information about scientific discoveries and hypotheses in the field of paleontology and anthropology, as well as other related sciences, then we advise you to subscribe to our channel. To promote our videos according to the algorithms, we encourage our viewers to actively share comments and put likes under the releases they like. People against people has always been the reason for the destruction of our own kind. Back in the day of the primitive communal system, any stranger who was at least somewhat different from the locals was perceived as a threat. The simplest and safest solution for the clan or tribe was to kill them. If such a stranger was very different from a representative of one species, then the conversation with him was very short. So the Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals hardly had a chance for a peaceful resolution of the conflict over territory. Despite the almost complete genetic similarity of these two branches of humanity, outwardly, Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals differed very much. Our ancestors, who came to Europe and the Middle East almost 70,000 years later, met here with the Neanderthals, who had been living in this territory for a long time. These natives were shorter than they were, more stocky and broad-shouldered. Also, Neanderthals had a sloping chin, a wider nose, and a massive brow ridge. Their maximum height did not exceed 165 centimeters. The structure of the body of the Cro-Magnons was close to the structure of modern people living in tropical areas. Their height could exceed 180 centimeters. They had long legs, and their faces looked like the current inhabitants of the Earth. It is noteworthy that the brains of babies of both species who entered the struggle for new lands were completely identical. But with age, the differences became more. Although the total brain volume of adults did not differ much, it is believed that the main problem of the Neanderthals in this regard was the less developed cerebellum. This part of the brain is responsible for motor coordination, memory, imagination, and most importantly, speech and social skills. An important survival ability of the Cro-Magnons was the ability to unite in relatively large groups to solve common problems. Neanderthals lived in small, most likely family groups, and although they already had many of the hallmarks of a nascent primitive society, more sociable competitors outstripped them in this component of development. Judging by various archaeological finds, the Neanderthals had concepts of medicine. They took care of the elderly and the crippled. There are suggestions that the concept of religion and art had already begun to emerge in their minds. The simplest explanation for the disappearance of the Neanderthals is their destruction by Homo sapiens. It is quite possible that as such, there was no global armed conflict between these species. It's just that the more numerous and organized Cro-Magnons gradually forced out the indigenous inhabitants of Europe to areas less favorable for living. The process of the destruction of the Neanderthals lasted approximately 30 to 35,000 years as the new owners of the continent settled from Africa. The aliens were able to quickly adapt to colder climates and create better tools and weapons. Neanderthals used only primitive spears and clubs in hunting and war. By the end of the confrontation, their rivals had already successfully used spear throwers. This device made it possible to throw a spear much further. Accordingly, Cro-Magnon hunters were more efficient in obtaining food. Both species successfully used the driven method of hunting. But the Cro-Magnons, who were able to interact more efficiently, most likely managed to collect larger hunting parties. An important difference that could have influenced the extinction of the Neanderthals was the diet of different types of the ancient people. 
Analysis of the remains of different groups of Neanderthals shows that each of them ate a certain set of foods. Some ate only the meat of local ungulates, some collected certain plants, and some got fish or seafood. The disappearance of familiar food associated with its destruction or relocation of the group to a new place led to significant problems. First of all, in more severe conditions, children died. Decreasing birth rates and increasing mortality naturally led to the extinction of the species. Cro-Magnons, on the other hand, ate about the same regardless of the area in which they lived. Basically, their diet consisted of plant foods. The animal component could differ depending on the region and time period. At the beginning and at the end of their appearance in Europe and Asia, our ancestors used different methods of cooking meat. The closer to our time this period, the more perfect were the methods of cooking and the more varied the diet. It has long been no secret that genetic proximity of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons allowed them to have common offspring. They had a certain common ancestor, from which according to various estimates, both species separated in the period from 200,000 to a million years ago. The genes of modern humans contain between 1 and 4 percent of Neanderthal DNA. Therefore, it is possible that not all of them were destroyed with weapons. Some of them had assimilated by a more advanced species. But, more often than not, the conflict of interest ended sadly for one of those parties. You should not think that the Cro-Magnons who came from Africa simply wiped their closest relatives off the face of the earth. Excavations made at the sites of both those and other participants in the events show that Neanderthals were not whipping boys. Scientists regularly find burials with traces of violent death from characteristic weapons. Also, often come across bones with traces of teeth. This shows that both our ancestors and their competitors regularly ate their dead enemies. In addition to these assumptions, some scientists express several more versions. For example, it is believed that an important advantage of the Cro-Magnons in the struggle for a place in the sun was the domestication of the dog. This symbiosis allowed humans to hunt and defend themselves more effectively against threats. The Neanderthals didn't get enough food to survive, but the Cro-Magnons prospered. The founder of this theory, the American scientist Pat Shipman, also believes at the same time Cro-Magnons showed another important property. They have a special mutation as a dominant feature. The sclera of the eyes has acquired a white tint. This allows you to understand where the gaze of the interlocutor is directed. Communication between people became much better, which led to the development of socialization and greater organization. Some scientists suggest that Neanderthals could have been the victim of a global epidemic. They left the African continent 150,000 years earlier than the Cro-Magnons. The microorganisms that appeared during this time, to which they had no immunity, were carried by our ancestors along the entire path of their settlement. These microbes, already safe for Cro-Magnons, caused the extinction of the Neanderthals. Another group of scientists say that the Cro-Magnons did not participate at all in the destruction of their main competitor. Nature herself did it. There is evidence that in places of the greatest concentration of Neanderthals during that period, several large volcanic eruptions occurred. This affected the decrease in temperature and the change in the composition of water and atmosphere. Many animal species that served as the main food of the Neanderthals died out, and after them, starvation awaited people. It doesn't matter which contributed more to the extinction of the Neanderthals, competition between species occupying the same ecological niche is inevitable in nature. Perhaps under different circumstances, Neanderthals would have had the chance of success, and now human society would exist according to other laws. But to find out if the world of Neanderthals would be better than the one we see now, or we can never get worse.
The creators of the Dinosaur Age channel express their deepest gratitude to the viewers who watched our video to the end. If you're interested in the topic of this release, we advise you to pay attention to the previous materials posted on the channel. From them, you can learn a lot of the new and interesting things from the history of the development of life on our planet.